Hi everyone, this is part one in a series of videos where I document my bachelor's project, creating an FNIRS brain computer interface. If you don't know what any of these words mean, don't worry, along the way I'll explain it to you. Uh, FNIRS for now is just a way to record activity in the brain, and brain computer interfacing is a way for me to interact directly with the computer just using my thoughts. So I'm currently studying my bachelor's in cognitive science here at Aarhus University in Denmark and I helped set up a brain recording laboratory uh, with this newer technology called FNIRS. For my bachelor's I will try to create an experiment where I focus on brain computer interfacing, this way to communicate directly with the PC using thought, and FNIRS. And maybe I'll also include some virtual reality in there at some point, but it very largely depends on how the scope develops as we get along with the project. Each episode will be updates mixed with a tutorial about a key part of the project. I expect that we'll get around to talking about how FNIRS works, what signal processing is, how we can use machine learning, what brain-computer interfacing is, and how to set up this experiment. And for today, how lab streaming layers work and how it will help us. All right, so let me introduce you to the project. So most of what you see here will probably change, but the basic idea remains the same. We have this person with a brain hat on where we can record the brain activity from that person. Then we ask the person to imagine an action or a scene and translate it into PC input using some advanced machine learning methods here in the third step. So. You can imagine I'm playing this 2048 game, for example, and I just uh, think about moving my, my arm up or down. And that gets translated into the blocks moving up or down uh, because uh, I have gone through this encoding step. All right, so no matter how far we get with the project, we need to have the different technologies be able to talk to each other. So in this case, we need the FNIRS brain hat to be able to speak to the PC input and the PC input and the brain imaging device to be able to speak with the machine learning part. And to do this, we are going to use what is called lab streaming layers. And let me just show you how it looks. So here I have two different programs that I've written uh, that are uh, lightly edited from the uh, main documentation of lab streaming layers. So first of all we have this test lsl out.py is of course both are in Python uh, and this program demonstrates how to send data into the network. So what lab streaming layers does is that we are able to put a stream into our Wi-Fi. Uh, other programs are then able to read from that stream and can check up uh, on what streams have arrived and, and gone away on the network. So it's a really, really practical uh, tool uh, for these lab uh, situations where we have a lot of different technologies speaking to each other. So here I have the test LSL out, which uh, is the program that creates a stream that sends data out. So this will simulate basically our uh, brain cap system. So we just import some libraries here. Uh, the important ones are uh, the PyLSL uh, modules called Stream Info, Stream Outlet, and Local Clock. So the uh, Stream Info is a way to put info into the stream about what are we sending. The Stream Outlet is a way for us to actually send the stream out uh, uh, to the network. Uh, while the local clock is just something we use to generate some uh, fake data. So here I have set the rate of sending, just the standard rate, to 280. These don't have a, a big effect on the functionality. Uh, I've set the name of the stream to Aurora, because that's what uh, our uh, FNIRS device is going to be called. And I've set the type to NIRS, and it's the same as the devices we have. So the number of channels here is 256. This is rather random, but we basically generate just 256 channels of data, uh, which will basically be a list uh, of 256 in length. 
So here we start by creating the stream info. We define that we are using a float data type and we define a, an ID that uh, identifies it on the network. Then we make the data outlet, right? The stream outlet, as I explained, and we begin the stream. So we just print now sending data. We set a start time. We set the amount of samples we've uh, sent. And then we go into this while true loop uh, where we have uh, a sleep. So we assure it it's not a, an infinite loop. But basically we, we just generate some fake data. So here you can see um, that we create a random uh, number for the amount of channels in the, uh, in the signal. And then we just push it away. So let me just run that here. And now it's sending data, but we can't see anything. Why are we gonna see this? Let me show you. This is in the other script over here called test LSL in, you might already have guessed it. But here we are importing also from PyLSL the stream inlet and resolve stream functions. So we first uh, try to look, or resolve stream, uh, we try to look for the type nears, then we're sure that we are agnostic to the name of the stream, as long as we get an, a nears, uh, this f nears input, which is the brain activity. And then we create an inlet for the stream, so it's like the outlet, but we are uh, taking data in. And uh, we just pick the first stream that is in this uh, variable up here that we defined from just searching the whole network for these specific types of streams. And then here we are just uh, taking uh, any samples that we can find. So if a sample appears in the network, we will be like, oh, oh, I will take that now. Uh, and then we are printing that uh, with the uh, IC, which is like a print statement. Uh, and we also take the timestamp, which is included uh, because uh, it's a way to synchronize the different instruments. So let me just run that and we're going to see a lot of data uh, come out now. So it loads it and now we can see. So let me stop this script over here, the uh, testing out. And now I stopped it and it's still running and that's because the uh, output stream uh, was so fast that it's still printing. So I'll just cancel this, yes. And here we see that we got 256 channels for every timestamp. So this timestamp, for example, is uh, the amount of seconds since 1970. Uh, it's a weird convention. But here we get these random variables. And it will look a bit the same when we use the actual brain imaging device. Uh, and I'll just show you in a moment how it looks in the lab. So, see you there. All right, so now I'm here in the lab, uh, as you can see, and I'll just show you what I'm doing. So right now I'm opening Aurora, which is the program uh, that I'll use to basically run the collection of the data from the device. And right now I have, uh, I have a device connected. It is the Nearx Nearsport 2, and I'll just run a test here. So it's connected through USB, and we'll just run this standard 16 by 16. There's no uh, wires in, as you can see here. But I will run a calibration. And of course, this calibration will not be very good. Uh, but I'll just say, all right, we're back. So as you can see, none of the signals work, which is expectable since we don't have any input. And from here, we go into the recording setup uh, which is in here. So now that we've done the calibration, we can start it. So let me just write subject. That will be me for now. And then maybe I'll say two here. And experiment might be F nearest LSL test. So let's start it. And what we're gonna see is that we're gonna see some noise that is generated by, uh, well, just by system, by the system basically. What I'll then try to do is I will go into my Python scripts where I have uh, a modified version of the, um, the LSL in example script, where I get the uh, samples and the timestamp for each time, basically all the time that uh, this nearest device is turned on. So if I run it here, you can see it down here, 
and we get the signal now. And I'll just interrupt it and I'll show you here. So I've put it just in an NP round so we don't get a lot of decimals. Uh, but here we have 320 and that's actually because the first signal is the index of recording. So it's an on-device measure. If I begin now again, I can actually possibly just show you here. And then it's down here, so I'll just stop it again. But you'll see that now it's 422. It's E plus 2, but 422. Um, and what you can see here is that we have the timestamp and then we have these 193 different channels that we get data from. And I see that there's a regularity with the specific channels that are zero. So maybe this is because uh, of a system thing. Uh, and I'm not sure of this, uh, so I'll, I'll investigate this uh, during the coming weeks. But here you can see that I can draw data from nearly any device with this. And if I go up, try to find the stream information that I ran here, you can see that uh, it's, it's called Aurora, this LSN stream. It has 193 channels. The channel format is one. The channel type is NEARS. And the S rate, the nominal S rate is 4.36 basically, which seems to suggest that it sends data 4.36 times a second. And then we have the device here and the default session. Um, and you can see up here which of the things I've, uh, I've printed. Thank you. Let's go back home. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and at least learned a little bit from it. Uh, and I hope you'll follow me uh, in my future endeavors on this series of trying to get this FNIRS BCI project underway. Uh, I'm at least very excited to see where it will go. So, see you in the next one.